So this morning, we want to dig deeper into what happened to Brunswick teenager Trenton Lurkamp and how to prevent anything like this from happening again. As we reported a few minutes ago and have all week, the 19-year-old was hospitalized last week. His blood alcohol level was six times the legal limit. We've seen these picture, pictures, which are just haunting. This one shows the 19-year-old slumped over at a house party on St. Simons Island. A report says that his clothes were soaked with urine. He had spray paint all over him. In that report, his father told investigators it's not the first time this has happened at a house party to his son, who he says was just trying to fit in. Lori Osachi is a licensed clinical social worker and is joining us live via Zoom this morning to unpack this for us. Lori, good morning. Morning. So, Lori, any parent who sees this must get sick to their stomach. We both have boys. We get it, right? They're older, teenagers. We, we all ask ourselves, how can someone do this to another human being? But this is not the first time you and I have talked about bullying. So it should be obvious that this is totally unacceptable. But what can parents and what should they be doing talking to their teens and, and young adults who might actually think for some reason that this is funny? I... I like to think that most kids are good kids and that most people would not think this was funny at all. But um, I think it starts with the way you raise kids in our society. And I think it's really important to let kids know that to reward kindness, of course, and independent thinking. Kids are prone, especially teenagers, to want to fit in, to want to go with the crowd. And there is a phenomenon called mob mentality or herd mentality where you put aside your values and go with the group because you want to fit in. And I think it's really important that parents reward their kids for listening to their gut and being able to say no and stand up for others, others that are weaker than ourselves. Yeah, it's interesting because that not only, I think, speaks about this 19-year-old victim in this case, but also, in, as, as we've seen in these pictures, there are more than one, you know, there's more than one person standing around kind of watching this, posing in pictures. Now, the teen's victim, as I mentioned, said he's just trying to fit in. We touched on that, kept going back to these parties because he has no friends, felt like he was around people who maybe accepted him. So how do we empower our teens to speak up for themselves and not allow this to happen to them? It's not easy. I do think there is a drive to be accepted and fit in, but I think you can be your teen's buddy if they're lonely. Loneliness is very common to tell your teens they're not the only one. It's difficult to make friends, and even for people that it seems easy, it's stressful, and that it will happen, and to guide them to be in activities that that they'll meet nicer people. Now, I'm sure the parents did that. You can't, this was an adult, so you still can't help your kids from making bad decisions, but to help them listen to their gut too and not be afraid to wait for the right people. You know, I think it's so interesting because you, you bring up the point, and as we've noticed, I mean, at Trenton is 19, so I'm putting my myself in his, in, in, his, in his father's shoes for a second here. He's 19, he's technically adult, you know, I, he's, I, you know, our, our parents, should parents still with, with our kids at that age, you know, maybe, you know, college age? I mean, we can't ground them, right? I mean, how do we prevent them from engaging in something, you know, that, that they know is harmful? I think that's a great question. And I, I'm sure his parents <laughs> told him these were not great people to be hanging out with. And I, I think it's really important to let your child know what you're observing, not to judge their behavior. You can you can affirm that it is difficult to be lonely and listen to them. What draws you? Try to get them to talk. What draws you to this group of people? Um, try to listen and then tell them what you observe, that they seem not themselves. They seem depressed after they hang out. Their behavior's changing. And kids really do listen if it's repeated in a non-threatening way, but it can be harrowing to watch your kids go through behavior that you don't agree with and you think is dangerous for them. Oh, it just makes me just so sick seeing some of these photos, you know, spray painted, urine, vomit on this poor 19 year old. Uh, any other warning signs, maybe for our viewers who have children who are younger, who, who are in middle school, kind of coming up to high school or even in high school? What I would say is definitely watch for behavioral changes. If you're kids' personality doesn't seem to be coming out if they're hanging out alone more. Watch out for the internet. There's a lot of online bullying, unfortunately, on the internet, even from, especially from peers. So you want to do spot checks of their social media and just to make sure that kind of thing isn't happening. Do we ever stop worrying about our children, Lori? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
It's up to us. <laughs> it is. We only have one shot at it. Lori, thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. You're welcome.